let's call Sola. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing quite all right. I went to gym, chilling, ate some food. Sounds good. Ready Sounds to good. Uh, teach some League of Legends. <laughs> How are you doing in League? Uh, yeah, in League, it's uh, it's so so. I um I had a quite a good run in the past weeks on my main. Yeah, with uh, OTPing Ash. And I picked it like 730 LP. Yep. And uh, then I started playing other champs again. And now I'm not at 700 LP anymore. <laughs> it's yeah. basically uh, how it went. So yeah, I, I, I just... Um, I, 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 noticed, well, I noticed because uh, I'm playing with my team again in the league now that uh. I actually became like worse of a player if I'm not playing Ash. So I... Wanted yeah. to start playing other champs again. Makes sense. And it felt like with Ash and Seraphine, I was kind of uh, like I played Ash a lot and sometimes Seraphine. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was cheating my wins a lot because I don't really get punished for mistakes I do on those champions. For example, like dropping waves and stuff doesn't yeah. fucking matter if you play Seraphine. And if you play Ash, it's not as important as if you play like Aphelios or something. So I felt like I got into some bad habits and I feel like if I want to get even better, then I will not get better with playing more Ash and Seraphine. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I coached you last time, one of the things was that I felt like you weren't playing enough to be the main carry and like trying to take all the resources on the map and get yourself exactly. as most fed as possible. So it makes sense to me that you're finding more success on these kind of secondary carries where you don't need to get all the resources to be useful yeah but, but i feel like they are like at least for me it felt like there was a hard cap on how how good i can get with those champs and with this playstyle mm -hmm. because i think this playstyle works really well until a certain point because people just randomly in then get hit by arrows and just don't respect seraphine oils and stuff like that but every time i hit like 600 700 lp it feels like a really big wall because it's like if, if I play like 400, 300 LP games, it's like full master games, low master games. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I hit like 600, 650 LP, I get challenger games every, or I get a challenger in every game basically. Yeah. And the game just starts feeling very different because people punish you more for like yeah. not farming efficiently and they don't do as many stupid mistakes that you can punish with ash arrows and stuff. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, if I want to get like, if I want to push to the plateau, I, I need to get like better at playing other champs than Ash Seraphin. Yeah, I think it gets harder in a sense the higher up you go because you get like if I play versus uh, Seraphine or an Ash, I think I'll just go like 10 CS per minute and I will like pretty easily carry the game if I'm not feeling much pressure from the lane and I know that like as long as I just get my spikes, I'll be more useful. Uh, so I think yeah, exactly. And once you go I think versus this... higher ADCs, yeah. Exactly, this place that starts becoming like the norm at like six, seven hundred yeah. LP, and that's where I started struggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you want to take yeah. uh, videos from your stream, or uh, I, I linked you one I uploaded from Outplayed. Okay. Uh, so yeah, basically the the games I played in the last days on my main were just like a mix of I played bad, like I I don't know I've. I managed to somehow fuck up every lane phase right now, like do one stupid mistake, enemy gets double kill, and then it's like yeah a bit fucked, but it's just like I don't know, I'm just not playing my A game in 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 lane. Yeah, and uh, I feel like those games are just a mix of a bit unlucky teammates, unlucky gameplay for me, and playing different champs, which leads to like more frequency of mistakes. Yeah, and but I'm still... I, I, I you can go. Mm -hmm. I try to like um, get into the habit of like being the hyper carry again. So yeah, I, I'm trying. It's just like a lot of new stuff or a lot of stuff that I didn't do with Ash and Seraphine to incorporate, which is why I'm feeling my ass off basically every game. Mm -hmm. So the game I linked was the game where I felt like I did a pretty good job with uh, just getting 10 cells per minute or at least trying to hyper carrying. It's not for my main. Yeah. Um, but I felt like it's still like a good represent rep representation mm -hmm. because it was still even though I felt like 
from my perspective, I did what I could. It, it felt extremely hard to win the game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this would be like if I, if I would play my A game, this would probably be it mm-hmm. on, on a champ like MF at least. See, I see. So, your goal right now is not necessarily to gain ELO, but more so to just kind of uh, get re comfortable on more hyper carry style and to kind of expand your champion pool for your competitive games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think the fact that you have two accounts is good. Um, what I would do probably is to try to have like these type of games where you're not feeling that great to try to keep that to your Smurf. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm working uh, on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because what can often end up happening is that if you have like stuff like this on your main, then it kind of blurs the line between the two accounts and you end up losing a lot of confidence. And yeah, that's what happens happened the last weeks. So yeah, I just recently started using my Smurf again. Like I didn't touch it for like well, a month or something. Yeah, because I was so focused on just spamming Ash and getting as high as I could. Yeah. Okay. So in this lane, you're playing MF Amumu into Caitlyn Nami. It seems like a pretty free lane, but we'll see what happens. Nice. So when you're trading like this, what you want to do ideally is that instead of auto-attacking in the bush, that you walk a bit out of the bush, you auto-attack Q, and then you walk into the bush. Because mm. if you do that, then they so don't get vision of you, and they can't auto-attack back. And if you want to be like super fancy then, I don't know, have you seen any of those Viper clips where he's going in and out of bushes to trade? Uh, I don't think so, no. They're just like crazy. I want to see if I can find it. Crazy Viper clip where he's constantly. But does it break vision instantly if you go back into the bush, or do they have like really a... fast? Okay. So if you do it like well, it's it can be what you can essentially do is like you walk out of the bush, auto, walk back into the bush before they get their auto off, then walk back out, auto, boom boom, and if they're not fast enough in clicking, they can't get to auto attack you. That's but crazy. the biggest point is just that, especially when you're playing uh, range melee support into range support is that you really want to ideally avoid auto attacking from the bush because your Amumu now loses so much pressure because they see him as well. Mm. Then he takes a bit of a bad cue, so he gets chunked, but it's fine. Sweep your ward. Now you just have to wait for level 2 and let them push you in. Just prioritize not losing HP. In lanes like this, how you should be thinking is that your win con is to stay full HP and let the Mumu get a good engage. Like Usually yeah. trades aren't good, but for example, this is like a free trade, right? Where you're just getting to get an empowered Q. So this is good, but other than that, you want to just do as you're doing and just minimize losing HP and yeah. not trade. Because their win con, like a good way of trying to think about every lane, is to try to think what is their win con and what is our win con. So their win con is pretty obviously to like slow you, slowly poke you down, heal up, and slowly win trades. While your yeah. win con is the opposite in that you need an all in and to kill them on that all in, or to get a really really huge chunk and then you win the lane. Yeah. Sometimes in those lanes, I had a game where I played like uh, Kaiser versus Draven. Mm-hmm. Which is like a pretty shitty measure, right? Yeah. So um, I I noticed that I started losing, trading a lot of HP for CS. So how how would you go about that? Like there were a lot of situations where I was under tower and there was a minion that was low, and I knew like okay, if I get this minion, I will get a Draven order. Yeah. Usually. So is it just worth losing the HP to be able to pressure the all in? Uh, uh, not losing the HP and losing the CS to be, stay full and yeah. pressure the all in. So? Usually the problem is that like let's say you trade and every time you go for a last hit or not every time but if you take five last hits and you lose take five autos versus damage yeah and the problem with that is that usually that will add up to you either getting chunked so hard that you have to base and then you lose more minions than you gained or that they can just have full lane control for a long time and you lose more minions that way because like if you're constantly losing hp to 
get minions, you will lose usually lose more minions in the long run because yeah. you don't have HP. So Makes sense, yeah. usually the win con there is to just fully respect until an opportunity arises where I mean either they they can't really pressure every CS if you're not getting chunked. Uh, so worst case you lose like five to ten CS. And usually what will happen, because Raven players are stupid, is that if you respect really hard, they go a bit too over-aggressive, and then it's your chance to punish. Yeah, it makes sense. What the fuck? Yeah, so here I was like, okay, why don't you go on Caitlyn? It was a bit awkward. Yeah. And I think he's... I mean, Caitlyn has cleanse, I think, or doesn't she? I don't know if she does. And mm, here, getting hit yeah, by the trap so. is kind of disastrous. Oh, and the flash! Yeah, it was unlucky. How would you live? <laughs> wow, this worked out way better than it should have. I mean, here... Like... I mean, you can... There are a few different things that you can do here. But the biggest thing is that you want to, like... Just not tunnel visioning on getting a kill. And instead playing to... Uh, like not get chunked yourself. Cause... Yeah, that's something I noticed. Like because I I watched the games where I got like stomped in lane, and I was like, how how is it happening? And I noticed that this is something that I I don't yeah. know. I got the bad habit of doing a lot again. That yeah. I just greed for the low HP target and then lose so much HP myself. Yeah. So like here, what I want you to be thinking is like, okay, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Now you have two options. Either you flash for Caitlyn, or we say that Caitlyn's out. You can't flash mm -hmm. for her, so you can't kill her, so the only option is to be like, okay, Caitlyn's out. Yeah. Then, we want to be hitting Nami, but we also want to be aware of any skill shots that are coming through. So, I mean, getting hit by the bubble is fine, right? It's like, we could do better, but getting hit by the trap afterwards is just like random because we're running into the nami when you can't reach her and if you were just the auto attacker when she's here you wouldn't need to run into the trap yeah, yeah i didn't pay attention to my model at all like yeah it's a lot of times i just tunnel vision on the low hp target yeah which is probably why i'm losing every game on kaiser because i just sold the low hp targets yeah i mean that could be but like here there's like multiple ways of thinking about this. One way is to think that just as a general rule, whenever you're fighting, you always want to play to avoid skill shots and not take damage if you can avoid it. But mm. the second thing is that to realize how this in and of itself, if you stay at full HP, like let's say you just stay at this HP, how this has so much more value than if you get chunked to this HP. Because as we talked about earlier, their win con is sustain. So if you get yeah. chunked now, then you can see how they can actually keep laning. Or they can't, like, they can keep laning, they can ca catch this under tower. But if you yeah. were full HP now, then they wouldn't be able to catch this, because they'd be so scared of getting dove. Or not full yeah. HP, but if you were 600. So just being satisfied with the chunk a lot of the time can net you way more rewards than chasing for a kill. Yeah, definitely. That's something I need to work on, for sure. Small wins was something we touted a lot in scrims because we had a big issue of overchasing for kills in scrims as well at the beginning. So we wanted to settle for small wins, like getting the chunk, <laughs> making him recall, whatever, right? But not not greeting for everything because usually if you yeah. greet for everything, you get nothing. Yeah, I feel like it's sometimes like if the last couple of days or weeks or whatever have not been going that well, I feel like I start greeting even more because it's like this desperation, like, yes, finally a kill, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, I've it's had uh, similar things, yeah. yeah. Where it's like you're so desperate to win that you can feel the desperation in your gameplay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But then it's just like about reminding yourself that, like for me, it's I it's something that I need to remind myself often is that the game cannot be won right now. The game can only be won slowly but surely. Like, you get a lead, you get a here and here, you get a few kills, and then you slowly win the game. But if you yeah. want to win the game all at once, you're just going to want too much, and then it's going to fuck up. Yeah. So now you're still pushing into them. Good. Hecarim's invading. 
I think. Let's see, could you crush this slower? Maybe I think here. Okay, here we don't want to be pushing because you're gonna have to push one more wave anyways. And the problem yeah, that I think I, happen... I thought that I would get in time, I think, but just... yeah, you're really insane. I mean, it's fine to push it if you think that this will crash. I mean, then it's just like a miscalculation. But if you know that it won't crash, then you should never push this because it's much better for you to be pushing this like way further down here. Then you can yeah, yeah. either threaten to gank with a Mumu or Hecarim, and you're much safer yourself. Like, it's really scary for you to go for these now, yeah. But you're allowed to. Nice. Oh, but this should be a dive. Oh, here I would be spamping to dive. Yeah. Because like, this is what the fuck is Nami doing? It's a very big <laughs> trading on weak side. Oh. Well, you get the Drake, but it's a double kill that we dive. But it's fine. It's still good. Yeah, I think with calling dives is also something that like I tend to adapt more to the flow of the game than try to dictate it myself. Which is also mm -hmm. something that's just how I play like Ash and Seraphine because yeah. that's how I how I win games with those gems. But it's like a bad habit on other gems. Yeah. I mean there is a balance to it. Like you don't want to be the guy who's trying to make every like to micromanage everyone in the game. But at the same time you should have some confidence in like in the way that you play and in what you think is right. Like if you're yeah. thinking in that game that you can dive, then I would want you to call it and to, whoa, you put a point into E at level six. Yeah, I misclicked. <laughs> <laughs> that was very unfortunate. Oh, well, it's fine, she still dies. Nice. But yeah, I mean, if you don't think it's diveable, then it's just like, okay, we need to maybe start calling dives more often, or maybe like watch some other ADCs and see when they're diving when you wouldn't think it was diveable. Uh, but if you think it was diveable, or thought, more exactly, thought in-game that it was diveable, then I want you to just like trust that instinct and call it. And then if it doesn't work out, that's still a valuable experience because usually, one, it'll work out for some reason. So ideally you'll learn, okay, why didn't this dive work out? Maybe Sejuani open straight to bot after she dies and gets her in time. I mean, she wouldn't actually be in time, but let's say Malzar's TP or Nara's TP or whatever. Okay, then next time when you want to call a dive, you can check if solo laners can TP or you can even ask in chat if they have TP. Yeah. Or you can be thinking like, okay, uh, their TP is a Scion with no ults. It's a useless if he TPs or a, a mini R. Doesn't matter if he TPs. So it's just about... If you think it's doable, trust your instinct to do it. And then if it doesn't work out, think of that as like still a valuable thing because you're learning something new. Yeah. Yeah, for so, sure. Because if I never dive, I will never know when it's yeah. a good dive or a bad dive. Because yeah. I've had times where I wanted my jungler to dive and it turned out that it wasn't diveable. Like it just either they cleared the wave too fast before you got in time or, uh, you know, like, they got too much HP, and then my jungler wasted a ton of his time, and he's a bit angry, but it's not a, like, I will still keep calling the dives that I see, I'll just get better at spotting what is a dive and what is not. Now that I know, yeah. like, okay, if I'm versus certain champs, they can clear the wave really fast, so if my jungler is not right there, we can't actually dive. Yeah, that's also something with uh, just like doing it and getting better at it. It's the same way with the power farming thing, because I've felt like a lot of games in the past, I didn't manage to carry the fights hard enough, um, which was because I didn't farm enough. So I didn't, I can't really know what I'm doing wrong in the fights because I don't have the gold I should have. Yeah. So it's like hard to improve the fighting if I'm like fighting with 2k gold less. Yeah. I mean, usually like I always want to, I think the easier part is to get down the habits of like farming and making yourself a resource. Like I think the, the hardest part of League is like the laning phase and team fighting and not getting caught in the mid game. But I think like mm -hmm. resource management and stuff like that and being able to get yourself really fed if you're having a, a good laning phase is stuff that is 
it's hard to do in the beginning, but once you uh, kind of get a good feel for it and get into a good habits around it, I think it's much easier to do consistently every game. Yeah. Oh, this is painful. Is Let's see. How do we want to play this? I think here, when Nami holds this wave, like this is fine, but here, you should just be recalling. Oh, wait, no, you do. Wait, was it earlier? Yeah, That's yeah, here. Yeah. Know, yeah. So here, when Nami goes to hold this wave, it's good that you ping a moment to go, but you should just continue recalling. Because mm, you won't okay. be able to yeah. kill the Nami, and the. If the Nami is like insanely smart, she'll stay here anyways, get hit by a movement Q, and tank the whole thing and get super low. But then it's like fine, okay? She tanked the whole wave to hold it for the Caitlyn. She's faker, but it doesn't matter. But <laughs> you don't want to fuck your tempo because one, she should never be killable because she sees you guys. And second, if this then ends up happening, you get really fucked from this. But yeah. if you take the recall and the Mumu goes to stop her, like your thought process is correct. You should just think that this is a Mumu's job. I can't be involved mm -hmm. here because I really need to recall. And unless it's a guaranteed kill, it's not worth canceling my base for it. Yeah, makes sense. Because now we lose... How many plates? I mean, maybe we only lose one plate. Yeah, I mean, you lose one. No, you lose two plates, actually. Wow. Yeah, two plates. Lose two plates wave. and a cannon wave. So that feels pretty bad. Yeah. I think that's also like, again, in the desperation kind of thing, where I'm just yeah. like trying to go for every straw that's some out that's out there. Yeah. And usually when it comes to things like this, the most important thing is just to value your time really highly. When you kill the MF like this, you should have the mindset that you want to come back to lane the same time as her so that she doesn't get any breathing window and you can just keep pressuring her. Yeah. Because now the MF uh, the Caitlyn died, but she nearly got rewarded for it by getting coming back, getting two plates, getting to crash away for free. Yeah. And now they have like full lane control. Yeah, it's also something I noticed. Like yesterday, we played an official match, and I played with like a one k LP ADC, mm -hmm. and in game it didn't feel like he did anything crazy. You know, like he yeah. didn't just I don't know. Uh, Auto space me for that permanently or anything, but he somehow just was always where he needed to be, just had perfect CS and carried with three items. Like, yeah, it's a good example, actually. Good, this is good. It's good that you open red buff rather than just bot. Oh, that is an optimistic movement, but I guess it works out. Nice. It's good that you're pinging to make him engage. Oh my god, they're trolling so hard. Good, good, good. Sejuani's coming, I hope you saw her. Okay, the flash. Maybe a bit overkill, but... Oh, you didn't see her at all. No, I didn't. I think I'm trying to get the cannon at least. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I, did. I turned the not on the fight completely. Yeah. I mean, here we see Sejuani on the pink ward. But also, you could think, like, even if we don't see Sejuani here, for me as a spectator, it's pretty obvious that they're doing this because someone else is going to come as well. Like, if I was playing versus them, I'd be thinking, surely someone else is coming. You know, there's no way they would cheese on no mana Caitlyn and low HP Nami if they didn't have some sort of backup. True, yeah. And also here, I mean, your flash is fine, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. I thought it was if I flashed above, I get double, but I yeah. didn't get any here, unfortunately. You get the thought process. But would you say at this point it's even worth using flash for single kills anymore? I guess yeah, that's something I'm so. thinking about. I mean, it's like after laning phase, I'd say maybe you need to start considering it, but no big team fights is going to start happening yet. But I mean, here, I don't think it's, it's, I think it's worth to flash if you need to flash to kill Caitlyn. But to kill Nami, I don't think it's worth, because Nami is kind of pointless if she dies or not. While to yeah. kill Caitlyn is really good, because then she can lose this whole wave. So if you swap, if this is Nami, 
and this is Caitlyn, yeah, I think you should flash and kill the Caitlyn for sure. Right. But with how it is here, it just seems a bit like overforced, and like even if you kill the Nami, it's like, eh. Yeah. The MR. Are you going to QSS this game? Uh, I think later I am, yeah. Yeah, I think. QSS but uh, I, I just, I just felt like there were some games where I rushed boots on MF and it felt really bad. Yeah. So. Oh, what would you, what would you go with the spy with eight hundred golden base? I mean, it's either two long swords and a pink, or what you did. Probably I would go two long swords. I think it's a bit early to get the Mar, maybe. Okay, good. Dive it, dive it. Okay, we see Sardani, never mind. I mean, you could still go for it. Go, Mumu, go. Or just die. Okay. Yeah, he played a bit like an NPC. That's a terrible herald. Oh no, what's he doing? Okay, that's a good ulti. But why isn't Hecarim doing anything? What the fuck? Yeah, it was a bit of an awkward situation. Yeah, that was really weird. I don't know why he doesn't run down. Like, why doesn't he run with you here? Very strange. But you made the best out of it, and it's good that you don't kill yourself. Okay, this crazy cheese, I like it. Oh no. Okay, it works out. I like it, I like it. So you should probably pay more attention here to max, like, to dodge the bubble than to maximize autos. Yeah. Because dodging the bubble is a lot more important. Like, if Caitlyn doesn't fuck up her trap, I think you trade one for one. When, if you play it, like, I mean, there's a few things here. One is, like, you want to play it slower. Like, here, once she uses E, and you have her slowed down, you can play it really slow from this point on. So you don't need to, like, insta-kill her, because Amumu can help you. Yeah. So it's much better to be, like, spacing backwards and making sure that 100% you're dodging the bubble, and maybe even dodging her Q, rather than, like, trying to kill her as fast as possible. We're going BT this game. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, no, it doesn't. You should go LDR yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was thinking about LDR, yeah. yeah. I just saw tab and saw all the armor items already. Let's see if you press tab again there. Yeah, this is definitely going to be like, Sedrani will be like 300 armor or something. Nara is going to get probably an armor item after his Trinity Force. Malsar, Nami, and Caitlyn probably won't get much armor, but you'll mostly be hitting yeah, Sedrani. I was, and I, I was feeling like because I'm so over the curve that I probably will not have big 5v5 fights for a little more and can get away with the BT to be stronger in the 2v2, 3v3 stuff. Uh, this, uh, was, was, I mean, I think you're, the other process. thought process you can have is that I'm far ahead of the curve, so I can build more for scaling rather than needing to be as strong right now, because I'm going to be stronger anyways. Mm, yeah. It's like, even if you're buying towards LDR now, you're still stronger than Caitlyn, so it's fine. Okay, Caitlyn trolling. Nice, you kill her. You don't kill her. Okay, it's fine, you got all her sums. But what are we doing here? Yeah, this is good. Why are we so scared? Oh, Mumu has no ulti, but it doesn't matter. That's really weird how scared Mumu is. They should die here always. Caitlyn's no sums. Okay, but we're cheesing. There's no way they fall for this, but they might. <laughs> oh, no, they don't. Okay, good. Get red buff, good. Now we see Sajani topside. Some of most interesting. I guess it could be worse. He gets a good ult at the end. He yep. made up for it. Okay, Hecarim coming in. It's a very long laning phase. It's 19 minutes and you're still bought. Okay, nice. It's an RTPing. Oh, it's a double TP. This is a rough one. 
Oh, and he cues the minion like a. Okay, yeah, just run. Good. Sinner TP's now! Oh my god. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, walk up, walk up. Good. Nice. So here again, you are tunneling a little bit to get more autos. Like, you should. It, yeah. You barely dodge it, but you should be prioritizing dodging this more than uh, getting more auto attacks on him. Yeah. Like, dodging CC is always better than DPSing a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's I... also something, like, if I watch my team fights, like, I notice I just commit to doing damage way too early, and it's like, if they have eight CCs, uh, something is always going to hit me. It's like, I'm really bad. Oh, I would say, like, I'm really bad at being the 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 lone carry like if if the game is either i one v nine or we lose then we're probably gonna lose most yeah. of the game because I'm not good at like dodging everything and being patient enough to actually one v nine yeah I mean usually like there's a balance between the highest DPS and the highest safety right you'll have players that play too safe and then they never get to do their montage play or do enough damage in a team fight so they can't carry and then you also have the other side of the spectrum which what sounds like you're on where you want to do damage too much, so you get hit by some random CC and you get one shot. Yeah. But here... yeah, it feels like I'm always bouncing between, like in the last couple of years, I feel like I'm bouncing between the two extremes and it's still hard for me to get like the, the perfect mix down. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think you should do here in this moment for your recall? Mm. Yeah, we should probably get tower for free and next place, right? Yeah. So I understand the thought process that you want to get Mountain Drake, so you want to recall. But there are a few things that we need to think about for that. First of all, I think it's worth to get this tower and get next wave and potentially drop Drake. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because in this scenario we don't actually need to. What you need to think about here is the death timers. First of all, the death timers of the enemy team, but also the death timer of your hack room. You just ideally want to be in base at a similar timing and a little bit after hack room is spawning. Because you're not going to run alone and start Drake while your jungler is dead or in base. Yeah. You want to be running to Dragon with him. Like you'll see now that it's a bit awkward because, sure, you recalled earlier, but you don't do anything. Like, yeah, you're just waiting for the hack room kind of to come anyways. And then you start the Drake. So if you're just staying here and you're being like, let's say the hack room is here where he is right now. And you're here. This is completely fine. Because the hack room will face check stuff and probably the fight will not start instantly. So you'll get to catch up and with your W moon speed and be there when the Drake starts. Yeah. I think the death timer stuff is something that I I do pay attention to, but it's mostly just looking at the enemy ADC and not the entire enemy team and my own team. Yeah. Like I, I definitely think about the death timers when I think about recalling or not, but mostly I lo look at the enemy ADC and try to match him. Yeah. But I mean you're right, it's like it makes no sense for me to be on map before Hackroom is there. Yeah. But it's also like for me, especially, like even if my Hecarim was alive in that moment, I was still greed for tower just because it's such a big surplus of gold. And I think that I can carry if I get the most resources rather than like playing for an early Drake. Yeah. Makes sense. But also now. Okay, wait. So I want to see. Why are we bots here? Where do you go, bots? This is really weird. I don't know why you're going bolt here. Here you should go mid. Like, once you see this is... I mean, first of all, your gut instinct shouldn't be to go bolt. It's your gut instinct should be to go mid. Because you should be thinking that they're gonna <clears throat> catch bot wave, like either Cyan or Syndra. So, and you're after the laning phase point of the game, so you want to go mid lane. And if they start fighting bot, then what I would do is I'd be like, oh, you guys are going to fight bot? That means nobody can catch top, and that means nobody can do wolves and gromp, so I guess I have to do that. 
Yeah. So I would think of how can I like get myself most fed this game. I'm not interested in this random ass fight. That'll only be a fight if the enemy trolls. Because now look, nobody's catching mid. You're taking your Syndra CS from bot. So now Syndra and Sion are both resetting. Look at how fucked the map is. So now you guys want yeah. to play bot, but Sion has to catch top. Syndra has to catch mid, and your Hecarim died in enemy jungle. Yeah. So it's just, I think, like, we really want to keep the habit that after laning phase ends, we want to stay mid, because mid is, like, the key to the whole map. And by going mid, you get access to way more resources, and you get access to way more safety. And let's say you're going Drake into mid now, then you can get this bot tower way easier. Because Sion or Syndra will be pressuring bot, while you can catch midwave high with your Amumu. And then you can rotate aggressively. Like if you're rotating here, and Mouse are stuck under tower here, then their bot lane just has to drop. Yeah. And lose tower. But if we do it this way, the map is really slow, because we're kind of, you're kind of stealing the resources of your solo laners, uh, and forcing them to base. And it makes it really hard to make a team play. But if you're mid, it's much easier for you to set up the team plays because you can kind of decide what happens alongside your support uh, and jungle. Like usually it's whatever team gets mid prior first that moves to one side to make a play or pressure happen. Would you say in a, in a different situation where, like, there are situations in Solo Queue where the mid laner just doesn't want to play side? Would you just still go mid with him and get prior, or would you just accept it and come I mean, side? I have played sometimes with stuff like Seraph, and usually how it goes is it's kind of like so you go mid together, right? And you go like this, like, let's say these towers are down, right? I mean, actually, I can draw it in Rift Kit, then it's a bit easier. Uh, so you and him are the blue ones. Go mid. And then you guys are kind of sharing mid for a bit. Their ADC support is here. And ideally, because you're you know mid together, you guys get prio. And then their mid laner will push out bot. And then you will go to catch the wave. You catch one wave, you push the next, and then you look to regroup mid. And that's usually how it goes. You're kind of like, you're mid lane, but you're also going bot to catch waves whenever needed. But of course it feels much better if you're solo mid. And I think, like I very rarely, I mean I'm also, I guess it's a slight elo difference, but it's very rare that I have mid laners that absolutely don't want to go side. Um, mm. like even champions yeah, something... like... It's something in, in our team that's an issue right now because our mid laner mostly plays mid lanes that are not really good on side lane. Yeah. And we, we have the issue a lot where it's like, okay, who, who takes side now? Like yesterday we had something we had, I mean, <laughs> the draft was bad anyways, but we had like Seraphine Jinx and uh -huh. they had Silas. And there was a point where it's like, no matter who goes bot, he gets dived, basically. So it felt like really, really bad. But the game is was this, probably... Is it this... Uh... Uh, it was the, the VOD before. I want to see. Uh, this? Yes, the last game. I mean, the game was probably fucked in different ways anyways, but... Yeah, yeah. Let's just see after lane. I mean, it seems like the laning phase went rough. Yeah, for example, there, like, oh where God. my my third death, I, am so much better than I think, you. was where, where I tried to catch side and I just... Yeah, here. I oh, know it's the second death, actually. Yeah. So I tried to take this wave, go base. Here the problem is, I mean, there's a few problems. Okay, so here, I mean, this is like, now we're kind of getting over to competitive stuff, but it's fine. It'll help you in solo queue as well. So, oh my god, she lives. I mean, this is kind of the, the greeting for kills, I guess, that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, like, this is fine, this is fine. And then here, when she's, you see she gets the triumph broke, you should know that she's not killable, but you're kind of too late anyway, so it's fine. Uh, but here... You can see, so your team is calling to play for top tower, right? Like, the cane just pings top tower, the cane has top camps, and the play is pretty obviously to play for top tower. You can probably mm -hmm. see it on the minimap now. So the correct play is for you to run top. Because just you want to be the strong side, 
Whoever mm. catches bot catches bot. It'll probably be Orn recalling in a bit. Uh, but you need to oh. be on the strong side. And also, you want to be in the lane, ideally, that's safe. And safety, in this case, means having a tower. So it's not a long lane. Because mm. this is very scary, right? Yeah. You need really good vision to be able to get this wave without being scared. Even if they don't have that scary champs. But they even have scary champs, which makes it even harder. But you can see how now your team is not able to play top because you have an orn top. And your team is not able to get control through mid. Like, how you want to play this is that you want to open through mid. Like, well, you have two options. One, you can try to cheese the Aatrox with the Orn ult, and maybe that'll work. Or you can do the more standard play, which is to open through mid with your team, get mid prior, then move into top, get top vision, and look to play for top tower. But if they match the play, it's hard, but at least you're getting some sort of proactive play. Mm hmm but okay so 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 what i should think about is not like okay which wave has not been like what i was thinking why i went bot was okay where can i get resources which lane has not been answered yet basically yeah so i wasn't even thinking about okay what's strong side what's weak side in this moment just like okay nobody's bot bot is a wave i need gold i go bot. that was basically what i was thinking but so instead i should be thinking okay we want to play again around top side in the next minute or two so i should yeah. always go around to the lane where the play is going to happen. Or yeah, the strong side I mean, be. how you should think of League is that there's always someone being sacrificed and someone earning from that sacrifice. It's impossible to play all three lanes equally in League of Legends. The jungler has to path to one side. The jungler has to prioritize one side. And it's the same for after uh, laning phase as well. You get mid-prio and you choose to go to one side. You yeah. cannot... Uh, protect and prioritize both sides equally. So the only responsibility that you have is that you make sure that you're involving yourself enough in the game to always be the strong side, if you are going side. And especially, like this is, this changes a bit after usually twenty minutes in a comp like this. Maybe it doesn't. I think Seraphine should still start going side because she has TP after like twenty minutes. Um, but you should be thinking like. Probably your thought process is just that Orn is top, so I can't go top. But you need yeah. to think that, okay, who's gonna who who's getting fucked here? Somebody needs to get fucked. It's not gonna be me. It has to be the Orn. You're throwing him okay. under the boat, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if you think that way, it becomes much easier to see the windows where you can get yourself ahead. Because it's it's too uh kind to think that you can just get yourself ahead without someone else getting fucked. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually something I don't really think about ever. Yeah. It's like I try to be as uh as nice to every teammate as possible if that makes yeah. sense. But yeah, yeah it makes I mean, sense. But I mean I'm playing Jinx, I need to go to win for sure. Yeah. Like you need to make it clear to your team that you need to be the one that's prioritized and that that's the way to win. And that's how I've played on my teams and that's how I've won on my teams. Like, I will make calls and make plays. I'll take jungle camps. Like, when we were playing E-Masters after 15 minutes, I'm telling my jungler, yo, I'm taking camps from now on. I mean, he was playing, like, junglers that didn't need that much farm. But it was still, like, you know, it's rude in a way, right? I'm just saying the resources yeah. are more valuable on me now. In our team, it's more like, hey, can I take the cam? And he's yeah. like, no, and then I don't take it. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, it depends on the person as well, right? You don't want to piss off your teammates. But uh, yeah. there's a certain balance to it where you're making sure that you show one that you can carry with the resources, but also that you're also like aware of how you can get the resources. And first, we need to become aware and get good at getting the resources so that we can improve at carrying with them. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, exactly the point where I'm at. Like, it's hard for me to improve carrying because I need to improve getting the results first. Yeah. Sure. But I would say like this game, for example, is already one of the games where I felt like I was for my uh, purposes or for my like usual gameplay, pretty good at taking resources. So you can imagine how the usual, like how I play Ash basically is I, yeah. I have six CS per minute and I just perma group and perma arrow, but in solo queue it works. So, but it works like only on Ash and on every other champ. I'm basically griefing the game if I play this way.
Yeah. I mean, I think you're doing relatively good this game. The only thing is that I'd want you to go mid a lot earlier. Uh, and I want to see you, like, I mean, probably the two things that I want to see you is, one, try to, because a lot of cases, you'll have both tower falling down like this, like you did in the scrim game. Um, and then, essentially, you have two options. Like, one, you can play... Like, the most standard thing is that when your bot tower falls, enemy bot swaps to top, plays for top tower, and then your cross map plays to build up a wave and play for bot tower. But, this will not always be the case. Like, in this one, enemy bot lane is going mid, and your team is playing top side, so then you need to play top side. Usually, how you can, like, easily figure this out is by looking at jungle camps. Because jungler is, like, the role that moves around the most, and he always wants to be where his camps are. So mm -hmm. if he is going, like if you are now calling, I want to play for both tower, then your jungler will be like, uh, yeah, it's really awkward for him, yeah. right? I think what I was calling was like, I need Kraken, I'm piss useless. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was my call. <laughs> Which is like, it's not wrong, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's nothing to play around, so. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to make a proactive play in this game. The best way would be to try to get some cheese going. like. Probably the best way would be you and Thresh look to cheese the Aatrox top. I'd say that's the most realistic that would work. Like you go through bushes or an old sim, Thresh uh, flash lanterns into hook, and then if you kill them and catch them off guard, maybe you can even get top tower. But uh, in games like these, when you fall behind, it is really hard. Like we found that usually the team that wins the early game just wins the game if both teams are equal skill. Um, and comps are not crazy. Like in this game, they have Callista, and I mean, they have a fine scaling comp, but uh, I'd say you guys outscale pretty hard. So, in a game like this, the win con can just be to wait, but uh, it's just important to try to figure out like the rules of the game, to figure out why things happen the way they do. And when we're watching this back, it's obvious why you get fucked here. So, maybe yeah. you can then try to recognize this before it happens and figure out how can I avoid these types of positions and put myself in a position where I'm the never the one getting fucked. Yeah. Because it is like also easy to just autopilot, like autopilot walk bolt. Yeah, but, I think it's like also much harder if you're in a losing position to figure out what the right move is. Like because in a winning position it's much like you have the pressure on the map anyways. So the games where like this is the game, the the competitive game, yeah. where I would probably be like, okay, we got fucked, we were ultra behind, our comp was shit. Just never look at the replay again. Yeah, but it's probably the more way more important to look at this game than the games that went well. Yeah. I mean, do you want to watch more of that? <laughs> or do you want to watch more of that? <laughs> I mean, I think honestly, like, what do you think about the comps? Would be interesting. Like, I think we we drafted like complete garbage. The comps. Yeah. Because uh, let's see I the actual are. draft phase. Yeah, the draft phase will, yeah, okay. Uh, so you guys, did you guys first pick Seraphine? Yeah. With no Silas ban? Yeah, it was something that uh, we should not have done for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I want to play Seraphine, I for sure want to ban Silas. Especially... Yeah, the thing is, it was like the. Uh, the third game of a best of three, and the first two games they just banned Silas, uh, banned Seraphine. Yeah. And in the third game they banned Na instead of Seraphine. So we already had our bands like locked in a bit. But oh, yeah, I we see, didn't think about we probably should have banned Silas instead of Jax if we know Seraphine's maybe going to be open. Yeah. Because what do you want to do? Like something uh, Big RV2 helped us a lot with drafting and. Or ethics. One of the things that he talked about a lot was that when you always want to ban for your first pick or for your one two. So if you're planning to, like an example that we had was that we wanted to first pick Lucian Nami or first pick Lucian, uh, and we weren't banning anything for the Lucian. But then when we started banning for the Lucian, like we banned Lulu or Yumi, then the enemy got way more fucked because we just banned their only answer and they had to then either ban Lucian or they wouldn't have a good answer into it. So it's like in a game like this, I don't know why we're banning Jax. Maybe they have like one trick. I don't know, enemy players. But uh, I'd always ideally like, what would you per first pick if not Seraphine? Uh, Aatrox, probably. So that's the Jax ban then. 
Then I'd say maybe yeah, yeah. And I the mean, enemy just is top lane is just basically Jake's OTP as well. Yeah, but then wouldn't you just why wouldn't you just want to go Aatrox here then? Do you think they're gonna take away the Seraphine? Um. Maybe I mean it was basically just like okay, Seraphine is over. We gotta go Seraphine. I think yeah. It's some we we all we tunnel vision a lot in draft. Yeah, it's because smart. We didn't to... expect them to not ban yeah. Seraphine. It's smart to make like scenarios. Uh, it don't have to be that complex, but to like see how they ban, how you want to react accordingly. Because let's say they don't play Seraphine, then it's really weird to not take the Aatrox and just pick Seraphine two three, and they don't have a chance to really counter it. Yeah. Picking full bot lane here. That's yeah. That's weird. also the, yeah, yeah. It was like basically what happened was. Enemy picked uh, Athelios two games in a row, and in the second game we played Jinx Thresh and we fucked them pretty hard. And we were thinking like, okay, the game is going to be about who gets the uh, Thresh plus Hyper Carry. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking like, okay, we're just going to pick the Thresh, and they just pivoted to the Callista in second phase, which we didn't think about at all. Yeah, I mean, the problem that I have is that their top side is like so Exodia that regardless of what they pick bot, the game looks really hard. Like they could go fucking Kaisa or Ezreal, and I'm still. I think it's hard to play this game versus their top side. Yeah. So what I would want to do here instead is to think, okay, they picked uh, a jungle top flex in Sejuani, right? Uh, so I would want to pick my jungler here, and I'd want to pick Aatrox here. Because then we are kind of ma matching their top side, and then we can... They will probably have to pick top on three. Then we can ban whatever ADCs we think they want to blind pick. Like, let's say they've been blind picking a few a lot and it's annoying that we can ban that. And then we can think, like, what ADC support do we want to go for or 5? Yeah. And you can ban according to that as well. So, like, if you want to go Jinx, probably you wouldn't want to ban Aphelios. Maybe you'd want to ban uh, Callista, Caitlyn, or whatever you think they play that's annoying. Uh, yeah, but... what, I was, what I was thinking about was just, like... Uh... Yeah, the, the Aatrox would probably still be the best pick. And either go Aatrox plus jungle, or maybe counter pick the Silas. And, yeah. But then it would destroy the flex already, and they could counter pick Seraphim bot. So, yeah, jungle would probably yeah. still be the best option. Yeah, I mean, with doing that, you'd get to keep the Seraphim flex, so you could counter Silas. Like, probably going into second phase, they wouldn't ban Silas counters. They'd ban ADCs or supports, if I were to guess. Uh, and then you'd get to either, like, then you have more options, right? Because then you'd get to see four picks, and you'd get to say, okay, do I want Seraphine bot in this draft, or do I want to play a different ADC? So you have a lot more freedom. Like, if they pick Kalista now, you could pull out the Ash and fucking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then you'd also have a stronger top side, because Aatrox is OP. And. Your junglers wouldn't get banned out as well, and your jungler is kind of a nocturne one trick, no? Yeah, he used to be like in solo queue. He he still is a bit, but he plays other chance. Yeah, but they ban nocturne every game because they look at his OPG and they see okay. Nocturne, yeah, OTG, so then it yeah. would be turbo if you went. Oh wait, no, they banned the first three. I'm stupid. Yeah, they banned Sakyon. Oh, that's kind of crazy bans. Yeah, we, uh, we fucked them in Zek last game. Ah, so. uh, I see. I see. I mean, I like the cane, but here I feel like if you have Aatrox cane, oof, that would be terrible. Like, it's not like Aatrox, or it's not like Kane sees the Callista and knows it's a good cane game, you know? It's just because of the Sejuani, mm -hmm. Silas, and the melee top. But everybody's yeah. going to play a melee top anyway, so. But the problem now is that you have a losing bot lane, you have a losing mid lane, and you have a losing top lane. And they have and a jungler. Scaling jungler. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, don't like this. Let's see the other drafts. Yeah, I think I think the second game, the draft was good. So here we first yeah, beat Nar. Good. Yeah, the Nar situation was because, basically, we struggled a lot with side lanes. And even if you blind pick Aatrox, they picked Nar in the first game. Mm -hmm. And then we still had no side lane prior, and now it's basically just the best champ of our top laner, and we just always have a side lane that gets prior, and he just basically always wins side with now. Yeah. I mean, this makes a lot more sense, because now, okay, so you always want to draft with, like, how I think drafting should always go, 
is that you're drafting with some sort of intent rather than just picking champs because you think they're strong. So now I, I like the Jinx Thresh a lot because one, it's helping you from Orn, and it's because you see enemy ADC. But it felt like in the third game you guys just picked it because it was like, well, it was good last game. Yeah, but exactly. How you should instead be thinking is like, okay, enemy is showing, like what is the enemy showing and what do we want to answer that? And then you can get drafts that are like hard winning because you're not just thinking this champ is strong, you're thinking what is it, like if I was playing Aphelios, what would I not want to play versus? Probably Jinx Thresh would be up there, it's most annoying. Like Caitlyn yeah. Lux would also be really annoying. But that would be a lot weaker into or Nautilus, so then you have like that to think about as well. Yeah. The karma though is a bit weird. Yeah, that's just, uh, our, let's say our mid laner has a special champion pool. And we were just thinking like, okay, uh, we're going to play for Jinx Hyper Carry. And Karma yeah. is something that has worked a lot for us in the past, so. And he does have a special champion pool. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, he just guys... feels, like the general rule is that you want to have like either a high performing mid laner or a high performing jungler. So you kind of want to avoid when you have both either, like, you want to avoid combos like Belveth and Corky, who wants to take camps. Uh, and you kind of want to avoid stuff like Sack and Karma, because neither of them really want to farm a lot. That's what counts for me, then. Yeah, but <laughs> in a real game, if everybody's farming efficiently, you can't actually get that much resources. Like, yeah, yeah. you can still have a farming mid laner and still take Raptors and Wolves off respawn uh, after mid waves, if you have a Zac. Yeah. But now, if but you I had would like, still a... say, I would still say, like all things considered, this is like one of the drafts we were more happy with. Yeah. Because at least it had a clear structure, and we knew what we wanted to do. We had like good bot lane, we had top lane push perma, and we had decent team fighting. Yeah. It's not like that's the the only critique I have is the. The mid jungle yeah, makes, synergy, makes, like makes maybe Olaf. Sense. I mean, I don't know. Changing the jungle pick is maybe not. The, I mean, ideally you just change the karma to something like Oriana, who offers nearly the same utility but way more damage and DPS. Yeah, I mean, in the first draft, maybe we can, you can look at the first draft quickly. It, uh, it's basically the exact opposite. Like there, we had too many hyper farming champs. We basically picked four carry champs. Yeah, so we have the Atrix first pick. Into Nar, Aphelios Thresh, and you went Lushinami, Shivana Jungle. In here is a good karma. Yeah, but we, we, we did the Kogma, Kogma special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a bit of success in the past with Kogma mid. Yeah. Uh, but it was more into like immobile champs and counter pick to Victor, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't really Probably. blind pick this champ, I think. Like here, I, I think the Karma pick, like here I didn't want Karma or Talia out of the champs that I saw he plays. I think Talia is pretty good into all their champs. Um, I think the Shivana pick is pretty random. I don't know why it's good. Uh, so probably, I mean, Karma Shivana sounds a lot better than Talia Shivana. But I think also... Yeah, what I mean... do you think about on mid with Shivana here? We play a lot of on mid as well. Yeah, it could be fine. Like, I think the Shivana was just like our jungler is pretty good at like playing high resource champs. Yeah. And our mid laner is pretty good at playing low resource champs. Yeah, I think uh, Orn would be fine. I think that would be good, yeah. Like the thing is, you're kind of lacking a solid frontline because you have a uh, Nami rather than engage support. And then you're also having a mid laner that really wants to chill and scale and farm, a jungler that really wants to chill and scale and farm, and a bot lane that wants to play aggressive. Which yeah. doesn't match up too well. I think ideally you'd change the jungle pick, um, but I think it's fine, but then I think you'd want to go to either the Karma or Orn route. As you said. And that would be better, yeah. yeah. But just what like... What do you I, think about... Mm -hmm. Like the things that I would think about with you guys with drafting is like one, how resource heavy do we want to be? Like you want to have a mix of utility champs and carry champs. And second is to try to 
think a bit more dynamically about the draft, like how can we answer their champions rather than just thinking about your own champs. And also yeah. banning for your potential first picks or whatever, and thinking what does the enemy play and like what does the enemy realistically play. Because sometimes the enemy team will play champs, but you know that they're not that comfort on it, so you're fine with giving it over, even if it's like an OP champ. Yeah. What were you going to say? Mm. Yeah, uh, what do you think about Bushin Dami in general? Like, uh, Words is performing pretty well. And so OP. Something that works for us quite well. But that's... do you think it's blindable in every matchup? Or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, like, people were perm banning it against us in New Masters because it was just like we got that and it was free win. Like, yeah. the, I don't know, they nerfed Lulu, they nerfed Yumi. So there's nothing to really play into it anymore. Like, they nerfed Sari and Saber as well, which people would usually pair up to play into it. And I think playing Aphelios into it is fine, but it feels so awkward after, like, Lucian gets Gale Force and Nami gets Mandate. Because you have to play so safe, otherwise you just get one shot. Yeah. But after three items, I think Aphelios is pretty happy. But even then, the Lucian Nami can still do a lot. So I, I think it's really OP. And if you're good on it, I think uh, it's really nice. But it is pretty yeah, awesome. It's, it's something that has... I wouldn't even say that I'm that good on it, but it still has worked really, really well for us in the past. Yeah. I think it's also something because it's like a... I, I feel like a lot of drafts, we try to be like too extra, you know? Like to be like, oh, this is the triple flex and the counter pick of the counter pick and we go this champ and we just stumble upon our own feet basically and Lushnami is just something you pick it it's always good it works nice same with like trundle jungle like we could basically pick trundle Lushnami every game blind no matter what the enemy plays yeah and i think our draft would always end up being decent yeah maybe i mean trundle's really good into sedrani as well i don't know if it was yeah, open in yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. The game. makes sense okay. it's just like we're at the we're at the point where it's like at least I, like, I obviously didn't see the games and stuff, but I feel like at our skill level, it's probably better to, like, draft less OP picks and more picks that we know will end up in a good team come for us. Yeah. Because a lot of times yeah, we have yeah, I mean, I think picks, so but too. we have nothing to glue it together. Like, I mean, both, like, thinking of the whole picture and comfort is really important. Like, meta matters not that much at the level you guys are playing at. It's more about... Like having one a comp that makes sense and is like it's not well. There's two things. One, you shouldn't pr over prioritize lane matchups because lane matchups only start to matter the higher up you go. And second is you should prioritize comfort really highly and like how the overall comp looks uh, the most. So if you yeah. have like champs that you're comfortable on and the comp overall makes sense and you can play five v fives, then usually you'll have a good comp because every t every league game nearly these days are just decided by who wins team fights so just having like solid tools to both engage like we always really tunneled on having good engage in our comp because we thought that if we had good tools to start fights we were way better off because we were good at like finding windows to fight uh and we found that if we didn't have good tools to start fights we had a really hard time showing like our skill expression and winning games consistently so we made sure that in every comp we were asking ourselves, is this enough engage? Do we need engage mm -hmm. elsewhere? Do we need to change a pick to get more engage? And stuff like that. But that's probably what a lot of theme teams are thinking, right? Which is why like Lucian, uh, not Lucian, but Leona, Na Nautilus and stuff always gets high prior at Worlds, for example. Even yeah. though like in every tier list they are like C tier and don't pick yeah. tier and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just like teams think that if they have the agency to start things and like be the aggressor, that they can show their skill expression as a team much easier. Yeah. Like it's hard to show skill expression if you're just on the receiving side and uh never able to like punish mistakes properly by starting a fight. Like if the enemy ADC is mispositioning but you don't have tools to engage on it, then it's hard for you to punish it. Yeah. But I think Nautilus kind of sucks. I think Leona's OP as fuck, <laughs> and I think Nautilus kind of sucks. Like, that's uh, what the conclusion we had. We never played any Nautilus. We just played Leona, and Leona was like our blind pick engage. And we played Leona Rakan. I think those two are really good engage champs. I think Nautilus is good if you're really good on it, and really good at playing the early game on it, because, like, the strength of the champ is 
this early game. Yeah, level one basically. Yeah. yeah. While Leona, for example, it's like after level six, you'd always rather have the Leona pretty much. Apart from, I guess, Nautilus Ult can bring some more value sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so the engage thing is, is definitely something that we, we like a lot in our team comes as well. For yeah. sure. Should we keep watching this game? Uh, I mean, there's not that much time left, but... We can uh, try to finish it fast. Yeah, I guess. So, just here. I think you can do Nash. Because you guys kill four people. I know you're you're hundred percent tunneling on the fact that you have IE, but yeah. <laughs> Caitlyn is dead, Sedrani is dead, and Nami is dead, and Sion is just respawning with TP up. I think you could do Nash, uh, and if you get the Nasher here, I think it's just game over. So that would be something to think about. Like even when you have a lot of gold, if it's a free objective, you always want to take it. I also yeah. don't like Merc Treads here. I think you should just buy a Crit Cloak with your six hundred gold, and you should be holding on to the uh, Null Magic Mantle for QSS. Because I think you don't really care about tenacity. You just want QSS for Malsar ult and Sedrani ult. Yeah, true. Just look nice finishing an item. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just dopamine spike finishing items. Yeah. Yeah, this fight was really cringe. Yeah. Should have not committed at all. Yeah. I mean, like... This is all fine. But then once you see Hecarim just trolling... You should just like, like, one, your camera is pretty bad. You should be looking at Hecarim to see what's happening to him. And if you see that he's getting slaughtered, then you can be like, okay, this is a bad fight. But also you should be looking, you should be like here. Because you should be run, like looking to run this way if you want yeah. to get out. Because um, then you can also be looking at Caitlyn, but you'll be looking from this angle, which makes it much harder for Sedrani to get onto you. But then we die. They get Nash. And afterwards, the game just fight. really fucking hard. Now we'd have our QSS if we did not murder. Oh, there's a turbo ulti though. Nice. Don't know why you're S keying here. You can just walk up, but it's fine. Oh, here's where that LDR would be nice. Where did you flash? Yeah. Oh, yeah! Again, tunneling on the the dance. Yeah, because here, if you have flash, when Sedrani does this, it's so good. Like you flash the Nar E, and you kill them all here with Syndra. Yeah. So you want to like? I mean, I I like how slow you played the fight at first, and how like cautious you are. But you want to stay cautious, and you want to like your clicks are really bad. Your clicks yeah. should be much shorter, and they should be like uh, more with more intent. You're kind of just clicking around, and then you're like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. You got your QSS at least, but it feels really bad not having LDR. Like, holy shit, they have so much armor, mm. so much HP. For me, I would always like prioritize LDR because I think it's like games like these are usually decided around the three item spike. Rather than like, so I'd sacrifice a bit weaker of a two item spike to get a stronger three item spike. Because I feel like this is when it really starts to matter how strong you are. Oh my god. Nice. Push out bot. So Johnny gets caught. Oh, it's a good ulti. Nice. With how little damage I do to the 130 damage crits. Yeah. Well, it wasn't to the bolt, so you're forgiven. Now you're getting LDR. Team does a bit of trolling. And it's Mountain Soul. Got the mountain soul, but your team just hates winning. Oh shit, you died. Here you're way too slow to back off on the TP. Yeah. And he flashes, yeah. Then I'm guessing it's the final fight. Let's see the final fight. How you play yeah, this it. game was basically a bit illegal to win, but. So 
Cinder dies. Hecarim is doing a bit of rage pushing. And then the moon gets a turbo ulti. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Although, once again, we are walking into Caitlyn Trap. Yeah. Boom. Just tunneling again. Yeah. Then Hecarim ends, or what? Yeah, GG. I mean, I think you played, you're good with the MF ultis. I'll give you that. Yeah, the interesting part is that's usually the bad part about my MF. So oh. I, this game, I focused really hard on getting good ults, but yeah. everything else was a bit worse. But yeah, I mean, I think to conclude, like the biggest things are just thinking about still how to get yourself the most ahead and recognizing that sometimes someone else needs to get fucked for you to get ahead and to play more around mid, or not to play more around mid, but to after laning phase, become really disciplined at staying mid. And if you have a champ that can't go side lane on mid lane, then you have to be a bit more creative about it. But in general, the general rule is that after laning phase to say to see, you just want to stay mid and try to get yourself the most resources. Yeah. And then also and the toddling clicking. for kills. Your clicks yeah. can definitely use a lot of work. Um, I'd say just to try to focus on it a bit, like to always be looking to dodge skill shots, even when the skill shots don't seem to matter that much. Um, and also to not tunnel vision on chasing people, but always be like, like your movement always needs to be good, regardless if you're chasing a free kill or whatever you're doing. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really like, if I think about it, I think it really has a lot to do with the, like the way my gameplay changes uh, has a lot to do with how the like last 20 games looked like yeah because like if the, if the last games were shit then it feels like i i i i'm starved of this like dopamine spike of killing someone you know what i mean <laughs> like it's it's like you're always like oh the games are so shit i want to have a good feeling i want to kill somebody but yeah it's it's hard to stay disciplined then yeah but yeah it's it's something that's definitely gotten a lot worse over the past couple of uh weeks for me yeah Definitely, need to, we need to work on that. But nice, yeah, I think uh, there were a lot of things that I wouldn't have seen. Like this game, I would probably have just did a check mark on, be like, oh, I played well, <laughs> I did good ults, I carried, nice game. Yeah. But I mean, there's so much to improve on still. So. Yeah. That's why League is fun. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, hey. I wish you the best of luck in your scrims today and uh, your solo queue success. Thank you, and uh, I'll see you around, man. See you. Hopefully in LEC next year, right? <laughs> yeah. I'll see you, bro. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Coaching well done.